Okay, so uh, welcome to this fourth video on epilepsy and the GABA uh, the GABA pentanoids. Okay, uh, so uh, in the previous video, what we saw is that these uh, neurons, these pyramidal neurons, uh, which were uh, had their cell bodies up in the uh, primary motor cortex uh, at the uh, portion of that corresponding to uh, moving the arm. And uh, these, uh, these neurons have sent their axons down uh, through the internal capsule, through the crust cerebri, through the pons, through the pyramids of the medulla, and then they've crossed over at the major motor decussation to then descend in the lateral corticospinal tract on the uh, right hand side. Uh, and now they're going to, uh, their axons are going to come out of the lateral corticospinal tract and project onto uh, the next neuron in this pathway, which is an alpha motor neuron, which will have its cell body in this uh, ventral root horn and will send its axon out. So, if, if um, what's happened, remember, is that um, the epileptogenic focus has projected uh, onto this uh, portion, of, we're assuming it's projected onto this portion of uh, the primary motor cortex, and therefore, um, now what will be happening is that the uh, neurons, the pyramidal neurons of uh, the pr primary motor cortex will also be firing all in synchrony. And uh, they'll be releasing a lot of glutamate onto these alpha motor neurons, which are going to uh, innervate the biceps. Obviously, this is just an example. It's um, uh, you can have uh, epileptogenic foci uh, stimulating any part of the primary motor cortex, and those primary motor cortex will uh, then cause movement all over the body. But we're just looking at an example here. Okay, so these neurons are going to release glutamate, uh, that's going to stimulate uh, these alpha motor neurons to fire. Okay, so where do these axons from the alpha motor neurons, which have their bodies in this ventral root horn, where, how do they get to the biceps? So we're now going to have a bit of a revision of anatomy. Okay, right. Uh, so the neurons which are going to um, innervate uh, the biceps brachii muscle emerge from the spinal cord at the levels of C5, C6 and C7. So if I draw the cervical vertebrae, so here are uh, some cervical vertebrae. Here is the cervical vertebrae C4, here is the cervical vertebrae C5, and here is the cervical vertebrae C6. The, uh, the axon, uh, the motor neurons, um, so in the middle of uh, these, um, so, um, well, um, these vertebrae will have the spinal cord obviously going through them. So let's say this is the uh, centrum. These represent the centrums of, um, of the vertebral column. And then behind what you'll have is the other part of the vertebrae. Okay, so like that, something like that. And then uh, in, the, in the middle will be the spinal cord going down here. So basically, the uh, alpha motor neurons, which are going to innervate uh, the, um, the biceps brachii muscle, will have their cell body in the ventral horn of the spinal cord at around this level, okay? So they'll um, be coming off at one of these levels. And basically, um, the neurons, alpha motor neurons, with their cell bodies in this sort of level, they come off in a root, basically, which will emerge uh, underneath one of these vertebrae. So there are three roots emerging at this level. So we have the root, which is called C5, which emerges underneath C4, the root, which is called C6, which emerges underneath C5, and the root, which is C7, which emerges underneath C6. Okay, and in these roots will be uh, alpha motor neurons, which are going to innervate the bicep brachii muscle. Okay, so now we're going to have a bit of a revision of the brachial plexus. So these three roots uh, both divide, uh, both um, div uh, well actually no, firstly they join. C5 and C6 join together uh, to form uh, what is known as the superior trunk. So this is just a bit of a revision of the brachial plexus. So the brachial plexus consists not just of C5, C6, C7, but you also have C8 down here and uh, C9 below. So we might as well do the brachial plexus in full. So, uh, the first stage of the brachial plexus is that you have the roots, the spinal uh, roots, which are coming out from the vertebrae. What then happens is that C8 and C9 join together to form a, um, a um, trunk, and C7 doesn't join with anything, but it forms a trunk on its own. Uh, so, these are the trunks here. So, these are the roots. These are the trunks next. And this one that's formed by C5 fusing with C6 is called the superior trunk. So this is the superior trunk, 
Uh, this middle one, which is formed just by C7, is called the middle trunk. Middle trunk. And the one formed from C8 and C9, uh, and T, sorry, not C9, there is no C9, and T1 fusing together is called the inferior trunk. Okay, so uh, you get uh, three trunks in the brachial plexus, and then what happens is that both of these all of these trunks divide into an anterior division and a posterior division. So let's draw them all dividing like so. So this is the posterior division, and this is the anterior division. Okay, so this one, the middle trunk will also divide into an anterior and a posterior division, and the inferior one will also divide into an anterior and a posterior division. So I will colour in the anterior divisions orange, and I'll colour in the posterior divisions pink. So these are the anterior divisions, and these pink ones are the posterior divisions. Okay, and you have a posterior and an anterior division of each of the three trunks, the superior, the middle, and the inferior. What then happens is that the three posterior trunks join together. Uh, sorry, the three, uh, po yeah, the three posterior divisions join together to form what is known as the posterior cord. So all of these join together to form what's known as the posterior cord. So I will label this posterior cord. Okay. Uh, then um, what happens is that the two uh, h higher up anterior. Uh, divisions, they join together to form what's known as the lateral cord. So here we have the lateral cord. So this one is the lateral cord. And the anterior division of the inferior trunk um, remains on its own and doesn't join with anything and forms uh, the medial cord. And that overall uh, is the formation of the cords in the brachial plexus. Okay, so uh, if we want to know where this is on the body, then what we can draw is a picture of the rib cage. So um, if I draw uh, the rib cage like so, let that's, that this be the first rib connecting with the sternum here. So let's have the manubrial sternum there. Here's the first rib going back um, to the vertebrae back here. Okay, so there's a centrum there, and it needs to connect with its vertebrae. We'll have some sort of process off there like that, so it connects with its vertebrae, and then we've got the next rib, the other sided first rib coming there, and then we'll have the um, second rib somewhere here, let's say. Okay, so if you want to know where the brachial plexus is on this picture, then uh, what you can draw is you can draw um, the subclavian slash axillary artery. So uh, if we put um, if we put in the um, Aor the rising aorta here, then the, the first branch of the aorta is the brachiocephalic artery, so let me just cover this in. So this is the rising aorta here, and the first branch of it is the brachiocephalic artery. Now the brachiocephalic artery quickly uh, turns into two pieces, uh, divides into two pieces, one of which is the uh, common carotid artery on the um, right side, and one of which is the uh, right subclavian artery. Okay, so this is the um, rising aorta, or ascending aorta, slash ascending aorta. Um, and then this is its first branch. So obviously the aorta goes round in an arch back here, so that's the re remainder, remainder of the aorta. Then one of its first branches here is uh, the brachiocephalic artery down here. Brachiocephalic artery. That's before it's. Uh, that's that thick bit. The first one of the first branches of the aorta uh, is this brachiocephalic artery, and it's the thick trunk, so uh, which splits into two of the major ones. One that's going to su supply the head, and one which is going to uh, supply the upper limb. Okay, so this is the brachiocephalic artery, and it splits into the common carotid artery on the uh, right side. So this is the right common carotid artery common carotid, and this other one down here is the um, right subclavian artery, subclavian artery. Okay, uh, so this artery, uh, the right subclavian artery, uh, goes underneath the first rib, basically, so it doesn't go over the first rib, it goes underneath the first rib. So there's a continuation of it, and as soon as it gets, um, it gets um, under the first rib, it's, it changes its name. It's now known as the axillary artery, the right axillary artery. 
Okay, and it then goes above the second rib, and it remains above the rib cage forevermore after that. So here's the third rib. It's above that one as well. And it goes basically into the arm. So we'll have uh, the scapula here. Um, how about I draw the scapula? Here's the acromion. Here's the coracoid process there. Uh, the rest of the scapula is kind of like there, let's say. Um, okay, so there's the scapula, and then the humerus is going to be here kind of thing like that okay and the artery is going to go into the humerus so why is this important for understanding the brachial plexus it's because the name of these cords uh, lateral medial and uh, posterior tells you their position in terms of the uh, relative to the um, uh, the right well relative to the axillary artery and of course this is on both sides Okay, uh, well, you don't have the brachiocephalic artery on both sides, but you do have a, a subclavian artery on both sides. So basically, these cords are like so. You have the lateral cord, this cord here, is lateral to the uh, axillary artery. So if I continue on drawing the axillary artery, it's going to go down and it's going to go into the arm, basically. And uh, the lateral cord is going to stay on its lateral side, like so. The medial cord is going to be on its medial side. And the posterior cord, this pink cord that I drew over here, is going to be on its posterior side. So we're not going to be able to see that. So it's going to be behind it, basically. OK. So what's going to happen overall in our story of how these alpha motor neurons are going to innovate the biceps is that they are going to come out at uh, vertebral level C4, C5, C6 in the roots of C5, C6, and C7 because, as I say, um, the, um, the, uh, the um, neuron, the root, the spinal root, which comes out at a certain vertebral level in the cervical vertebrae is actually the one, uh, the next one along to what the number of the vertebrae is. So if you have a vertebrae that's C4, then the root which comes out from there is C5. Uh, if you've got C5, the root that comes out is C6. C6 uh, vertebrae, the root that comes out is C7. Okay, uh, so uh, these alpha motor neurons that are going to innovate the biceps brachii muscle are going to come out at levels uh, in the spinal root levels, C5, C6, and C7. So they're going to be basically uh, in, in these uh, spinal roots here. They're then going to um, go into uh, they're going to go into the anterior divisions of each trunk. So obviously these ones are going to go into the uh, superior trunk, and these ones are going to go into the middle trunk. And when they go into those trunks, they're going to go with the uh, when the trunks divide, they'll go with the anterior trunks, uh, anterior divisions rather, and they'll end up in this lateral cord here, basically. So they end up in this lateral cord that is, on this picture is this nerve here. So this is the lateral cord. Okay, and what happens is that the lateral cord gives off an important neuron. It gives off a neuron called the musculocutaneous nerve. Oh, sorry, it doesn't give, it's not a neuron, it's a nerve. It gives off an important nerve, which is called the musculocutaneous nerve. So I've drawn it here. So one of the major divisions of uh, the, um, of the um, lateral cord is the musculocutaneous nerve. And all of the neurons which are going to innovate, all of the axons which are going to go and innovate the biceps brachii muscle, they are going to go down in this musculocutaneous nerve. And basically, the uh, right axillary artery quickly uh, turns into the right brachial artery uh, when, um, when it enters the arm. Uh, and the musculocutaneous nerve is going to go with it effectively, right brachial artery. And both of them are going to sit right underneath biceps brachii. So let's do a bit of revision of the anatomy of biceps brachii. Okay, so if we draw uh, the humerus here, so here is the uh, greater tuberosity of the humerus, here is the lesser tuberosity, and there's the uh, intertubular, um, intertubular, um, intertubular, uh, canal or whatever it's called um, and the humerus continues on down here basically okay and looks kind of like this okay and then it articulates with the radius uh, below here and the radius has an important tubercle on it it has the radial tubercle uh, the radial tubercle here 